Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Josefina Bota from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and today I'd like to share with you some early results about the Invitoric. I was able to start implanting these lenses in March of this year, and my original idea was actually to target both eyes for emetropia, and in worst case scenario, the first negative lens. So what I did was a thorough eye examination followed by Aladdin, OCT, UVM, and also Onya Trans. After doing this, we had a really close follow-up of our patients up to six months. All calculations were done using the ray trace platform, as you may see, because according to, to what we saw previously, it's the best way to do it. And what I did to actually mark the lenses was to use the Gonio Trans procedure, which is a very simple one. You just take a photo of your patient, asking them to gaze far away, and then you place their photo into this grid and you're able to mark the eye correctly. So here's a bit of a surgery and what I'd like to present for you to see how it's such a good lens and it's so easy to work with that even in this patient with an eye syndrome, I'm using a 2.2 knife and a capsular rex is of about 5 to 5.5 millimeters. So after doing this and um, you just just to, you have to just take some OBD put it in the cartridge and just deliver the lens into the eye. Actually into the bag, at least the first haptic, it may go straight into the bag. So all you need to do is just place the marks. And as you can see, they are very visible. And then that's about it. Then you need to take out your OBD and you're done with the surgery. So the first results that I wanted to share with you, this spherical equivalent. So in this particular case, I'm comparing the expected one that it comes from ray trace and the actual one we got at six months. As you can see, all eyes settled a little bit myopic according to the previous calculation. Now, when studying the distant and corrected visual acuity, you may see it's really good. In the logmar scale, it's basically running 0, 0.0 all the way, except for a few cases. And when you compare the cylinder, the pre and post surgery ones, the max, it's 0.75, the minimum is zero, and then the median is negative 0.25. So the next thing that I studied was to compare the intermediate and the near vision. As you may see, intermediate vision, it's really good. Almost every single light is in 0.0 except for two cases. But then also you may, you need to be aware that the near vision, it's actually working really well. This is measured in Logmar as well. So clearly, if you have eyes sitting in minus 1.5, you're gonna have a really good vision because you're doing mini monovision or monovision by itself. But this by itself, it wasn't able to explain to me why they were performing so well for near vision. So I had a second look into some of my patients and started to study the positive spherical aberration of their cornea. And this is my personal conclusion. Of course, it's not statistical information yet because we need more cases, but you may see a tendency of how when cornea aberration works with the aberration of our lens, they actually perform really well for near vision and correct near vision. And as you go further down in their spherical aberration, that's when you get a 0.6 or a 0.5 long near vision. So this is my current way of uh, placing my patients. If their corneas are oblate or hyperoblate, let's say after a post myopic eczema laser, I'd rather have a lens with negative spherical aberration, but if you're on the other side of the slide and you have a prolate or hyperprolate, especially eyes after hyperopic eczema laser, you may be doing really well with the EMB. And actually you may also uh, use it for keratoconus patients, especially now with the uh, uh, use of the BMB toric. So as a conclusion, it's a very permissive landing zone lens with excellent distant and intermediate visual acuity and a very reasonable functional near visual acuity with no in-back rotation. So thank you very much. Having the chance of working with trifocal lens, we all know they all work really well, but there are always gonna be some patients that have a little bit difficult personality or patients with some corneal lactation. In those particular cases, I would much rather go for EMB and EMB toric. 
also you need to take into consideration the pricing of both, both products. And um, when you're able to give them something else besides monofocal or monovision, it's a really a win-win situation. The best advice I could give to you is to actually start using the Ray Pro because it's an excellent platform that it's been created by Rayner. And what they do is they collect data from all your patients. It doesn't matter whether it's a Rayner lens or not. So you're going to have their responses, their true, honest responses, how comfortable they feel about the implantation, are there any dysphotopsias, etc. And then you're going to be able to get that information back since they, they want to two years into your surgeries. For you as a surgeon, it's very important to know how your pa patients really feel. To actually know how comfortable they feel, I think it's a great thing. So I'm very thankful to Rainer.